So this is a review of what we did yesterday. So remember we were talking about respiration and we went through all the processes of respiration, internal respiration, external respiration. We're going to talk about this some more again today. Uh, and and uh, ventilation. Ventilation, we spent time talking about it. Remember what happens is the volume it goes up. And the volume of the chest cavity goes up because we drop this diaphragm down so the, the chest cavity gets longer and these muscles in between the ribs we're going to lift them up so the chest cavity is going to get wider and so what's going to happen is pressure is going to fall in here compared to out here and so air comes in and then when you exhale or expire remember what happens these muscles relax so this relaxes, it goes back to that dome shape, these relax, so the chest cavity gets shorter and narrower, and so volume goes down. And so if volume goes down, pressure is going to go up. So the pressure in here is now higher than out here, and so air flows out. So that was from a couple of days ago. What we started talking about yesterday was what happens when the air gets in. So the first thing that happens is remember the air that comes in is not the same as the air down here. Because remember this upper part of your respiratory tract is like a giant air conditioning plant. In other words, it's going to condition the air so that it's appropriate for your lungs down here. And what's going to happen the second it gets into your nose is we're going to begin to change the air. So as soon as it comes in, nose or mouth, we're going to change the air. We're going to start warming it because cold air is damaging to the lungs. We're going to hydrate it like crazy. We're going to add a lot of water to it because dry air is also damaging to the lungs. And then we're going to clean it so that there's nothing uh, bad that gets down into the lungs. And the deeper you go, the more this is going to happen. So the deeper you go, the cleaner it is, the warmer it is, and the more hydrated it is. But there's something else. Remember, the lungs are never empty. There's air in the lungs. There's air in this space. There's air in here, and that air is old air. It's an air from a previous breath. And so this old air is going to get mixed with this brand new air. So not only does the air change as we go down because it gets cleaner and warmer and hydrated, we're going to mix the new air with the old air. And so it's also going to change that way. If we look at the difference, this new air has got a lot of oxygen in it. You remember the partial pressure of oxygen is about 160. And it has very little carbon dioxide in it. The partial pressure here is about 0.3. But in here, this is old air, the air from the previous breath. And what happened with that previous breath is we took oxygen out of it. So there's less oxygen. And we added carbon dioxide. So there's more carbon dioxide. So as we go down, 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 we're going to wind up with less and less oxygen and more and more carbon dioxide. In fact, you can see that. So let's look at the composition of the gas down in the alveoli. So before we do that, though, let's look at the composition of gas this new air, this new breath, it looks like this. So if you are at sea level, 
Remember the sea level, the total pressure 760. And remember 21% of that 760 is due to oxygen. So the partial pressure of oxygen is about 160, 159, 160. Again, if we're at sea level, the total pressure 760, of that, about 0.04% is due to carbon dioxide. And we wind up with about 0.3 millimeters of mercury. So that's the new air, the air that just came in our nose, the air we just breathed in. But remember, the second it comes in, we're going to start changing it. And the deeper you go, the more it changes. So if you look at the air down in the alveoli, they look very, very different because it got mixed with old air. And remember that old air has a lot less oxygen and a lot more carbon dioxide. And so if we look at this air down in here and compare it to the air that came in our nose, they're very, very different. The partial pressure of oxygen in the air that came in your nose is this. But remember, it's going to go down. It's going to go down because we're mixing it with that old air and it goes down to about 104. So the partial pressure of oxygen down in the alveolus is about 104, 105. And look what happened to carbon dioxide. There was very little carbon dioxide in this air. But remember, we mixed it with old air and it's got a lot more carbon dioxide in it. And so if we look at the partial pressure of carbon dioxide down in the alveoli, look how much it's gone up, way, way, way up. So the partial pressure of carbon dioxide down in the alveoli is about 40, not 0.3, but 40. So this is the air that we're exchanging with. This is where we're going to get gas exchange, not this air that came in your nose. This is where we're going to get gas exchange. So the absolute most oxygen we can get into our blood is this much. And the lowest the carbon dioxide we can get down to when we're taking it out of our blood is this much. Not these numbers, these numbers. So if we look at that, here it is. There's the partial pressure of oxygen, 104. And there's the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, about 40. So blood is going to come from the tissues to the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart is going to pump this blood. Well, that blood is very low oxygen and very high carbon dioxide. And what's going to happen is when it gets here, we're going to get gas exchange. And remember, it's 100% by diffusion. And diffusion only works from high to low. So oxygen is going to move from high to low. And carbon dioxide is going to move from high to low. So here's the air that came in our nose. We changed it. The deeper we went, the less oxygen, more carbon dioxide. Here's the air that's in the alveoli. And that's what we're going to get gas exchange with. But then we're going to breathe out air too. The air that you breathe out is going this way. It's going back out. And it's actually getting mixed with cleaner and cleaner air. Less oxygen. Sorry, less carbon dioxide. More oxygen. And so the air that comes out of your nose actually has more oxygen in it than this and less carbon dioxide than this.
So we're going to get gas exchange here. That is external respiration. External respiration. And then the blood's going to travel. And then we're going to get gas exchange again here. That is internal respiration. So let's look at these two. Let's look at external and internal respiration. So remember, external is between the lungs and the air. It's between air and blood. And then internal is between the blood and the tissues. It's between blood and the cells or the tissues. So two different gas exchanges. Let's look at them separately. Let's look at external first. So we look at external again. It's gas exchange between air and blood. It happens at the lungs. It happens right here between air and blood. If we blow that up, it looks like this. Air and blood. That's where we're going to get gas exchange. And so it happens right here. Air and blood. So Here's the air that was came into your nose. That's atmospheric air. And there's partial pressure of oxygen about 160, partial pressure of carbon dioxide about 0.3. But remember, we're going to change that air. The deeper you go, the less oxygen there's going to be and the more carbon dioxide there's going to be. Until you get down in the alveoli and the Partial pressure of oxygen is about 105, and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40. So this is what we're exchanging with, and we're going to exchange it with blood. So here's the blood that we're going to exchange with. That blood has been out to your body, out to your tissues. And when you look at it, it's low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide. And so look, it's low in oxygen. The partial pressure of oxygen is about 40. And the part, it's high in carbon dioxide. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide is about 45. So this is going to come in contact with this. And we're going to get gas exchange. Well, remember, it's 100% by diffusion. And diffusion occurs from high to low. So oxygen is higher here, so it goes this way. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, is higher here, so it goes this way. And so we're going to get gas exchange happening all through the capillary here. And by the time the blood leaves the lungs, it's going to look very much like what the air did. So over here, we have a much higher oxygen level. The partial pressure of oxygen is around 100. And over here, we're going to have much less carbon dioxide. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide is about 40. Not 45, 40, just like this. Does that make sense? Any questions? Well, remember, the blood is going through a capillary. So over here is the, the, the artery, and over here is the vein. It's going through a capillary, and we're getting gas exchange. So gas exchange happens along here. So look, gas exchange happens... Here's this whole capillary. But look, after we get about here, there's no more gas exchange. Look, this line is flat. In other words, the gas exchange happened 
in only about one, the first one third of the capillary. This is how long it takes to go through the capillary and how much time gas exchange took. So look, it only took about one third of the time that it was in the capillary. But this, remember, is at rest. It's at rest. And so if it's you're at rest, that means your, I don't know, your your heart rate is about 75. And the blood is flowing. Remember, cardiac output is about five liters per minute. And that's fine if you never do anything else. But most of us at some point want to start moving around. You might exercise. As soon as you start moving around or you start exercising, your heart rate's going to go up and your cardiac output's going to go up which means that the blood is going to move faster. It's not going to take this much time to get through there. It might only take that much time. And if you're exercising really, really, really hard, it only take that much time. But look, even if you reduce the amount of time in the, in the capillary to this much, we can still fill up all of our blood with oxygen. Now, if you go over here, if you exercise at a rate like this, this is how much you're going to fill up. So not nearly enough. So we have this extra built in. I'm not sure how I enlarge this, but I want to get it backwards. Oh, that's how I did it. Okay, so let's go ahead. Well, if we look at this, look at the rate or the gradient for oxygen. It's 105 down to 40. But if we look at the right here, it's 45 down to 40. Look, this has a gradient 65, whereas this one has a gradient of 5. And yet, because they move in, um, and yet they move in equal amounts. Well, the reason for that is, is that there's more solubility in carbon dioxide than oxygen. Solubility of oxygen is about 1 20th of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is 20 times more soluble than oxygen is, which means diffusion happens at a much faster, faster rate. And so if diffusion happens faster, and even though the gradient is not as big, we're going to get equal amounts. Okay, let's look at internal respiration. So internal respiration is what happens at the tissues. So we're going to get gas exchange between blood and tissues. And so here it is here between blood and tissues between blood and the cells, the tissues. So let's look at it. So again, it's going to happen by diffusion. So here comes this blood. Remember, we just picked up oxygen, so our partial pressure of oxygen was about 100. We dropped off carbon dioxide, so our partial pressure of carbon dioxide is down to about 40. That's the blood that's coming here. And then we're going to get to the cells. Well, remember cells use oxygen, which means that oxygen is going to be low because they're using it. And then the cells make carbon dioxide. So that means the carbon dioxide levels are going to be high because they're making it. And so if we look at what the levels are, look, the partial pressure of oxygen is 40. 
it's low. First pressure carbon dioxide is 45. It's high. So we're going to get gas exchange. Again, it's by diffusion. It only goes from high to low. Well, look, oxygen is higher here than it is here. So oxygen goes from blood tissues. But if we look at carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is higher here than it is here. And so it goes this way. And by the time the blood leaves the capillary, it looks very, very similar to what we saw in the tissues. So look, partial pressure of carbon dioxide 45, just like here. Partial pressure of oxygen 40, just like here. And then that blood is going to go back to the heart, to the right side of the heart. And then we're going to go to the lungs. So we're going to pump back to the lungs. And we're going to get gas exchange again. So here's that same blood. Here comes your air. We're going to change it. We're going to add water to it, clean it up, mix it with that previous breath. And this is what we're going to have for oxygen. So oxygen is higher here than it is here. So it's going to go from air to blood. Carbon dioxide is higher in the blood, so it's going to go from blood to air. And again, by the time it leaves the capillary, the blood is going to look very similar to what the air did. So look, 105, 100, very similar. 40, 40, very similar. And then we're going to turn back around, and we're going to go back to the tissues again. And we're going to get gas exchange again. Again, high to low, high to low. And then back to the lungs again. So it's a circle, and it happens over and over and over again. So we have external respiration at the lungs. It's between air and blood, air and blood. And then we have internal respiration at the tissues. And it's between blood and cells, blood and the tissues. Anybody have any questions? So it's like a circle over and over. And so we have external respiration, internal respiration, external respiration, internal respiration. And if you look over here, you can see what the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide is in all these different places. There's the air we breathed in. There it is in the alveolus, pulmonary, there in the tissues, and so on. But somehow or another, we have to get that oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. We have to get the carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs. So we have to transport these gases. And so last time we only were able to cover oxygen transport. So let's look at it. So oxygen transport. So remember blood is mostly water. Blood is 92% water. So it's mostly water. And oxygen will dissolve in water, but not very well. But a little bit will dissolve in the water of the plasma, about 1.5%. So it just goes in. Nothing happens to it. It just dissolves in between the water molecules but not very much, a little bit. And if our blood was just water, then we wouldn't be able to carry much oxygen. But remember, our blood is not just water. It's full of these cells. And there's tons of red blood cells in here. And so what happens is most of the oxygen 
enters the red blood cell and binds to hemoglobin, about 98 and a half percent. So here are those red blood cells. And so if I look in there, I see it's packed full of hemoglobin. There's about 280 million molecules of hemoglobin in just one red blood cell, just one. And then think about how many we have, about 5 million red blood cells in every milliliter of blood. And then remember, we have five liters of blood. So there's a ton of oxygen ca carrying capacity in our blood. So let's look at hemoglobin. So hemoglobin looks like this. It's got two parts to it, the heme part and the globin part. The globin is four peptide chains. They're like proteins, but not as long. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Four peptide chains. And if you look in the center of each peptide chain, there's a little thing called a heme. So that's the heme part. So that's a heme, that's a heme, that's a heme. There are four hemes per hemoglobin. And if you look at what heme looks like, it looks like this. So there's our heme right there and right there and right there and right there. Well, look, it's this ring structure. The ring is called a porphyrin ring. You don't have to know that right now. But that's this ring. And then in the center of the ring is an iron molecule. Iron. Just like you see iron in steel or iron in cast iron pots or whatever. It's iron. Now, it's in what's called the two plus state. So it's ferrous iron. You don't have to remember that either, but anyway, it's ferrous or two plus iron. That's this right here. And that's where the oxygen binds. So the oxygen connects to the iron. And so if you look here, you can see that oxygen binds right there. It binds to this iron. Well, remember, there are four of these in a hemoglobin. So you can bind four oxygens per hemoglobin. Well, when oxygen binds to hemoglobin, we call it oxyhemoglobin. When the oxygen is not bound to hemoglobin, we call it deoxyhemoglobin. And in the presence of oxygen, you get an equilibrium set up. The equilibrium is between the bound oxygens, bound to hemoglobin, and the free oxygen. It's not bound to hemoglobin. And when there's more free, it binds. But when there's less free, it comes off. So it's an equilibrium. Well, in the lungs, there's more oxygen. More oxygen, more binds. And so we get more oxyhemoglobin. But in the tissues, the tissues have less oxygen. So what happens is the oxygen is released. It comes off of the hemoglobin. And so there's more free oxygen. And that's the oxygen the cells are going to use. So remember we can carry 
four oxygens per hemoglobin. That doesn't mean you have to, though. You could carry one, you could carry two, you could carry three. And then, of course, you can carry four. If you have four, it's said to be saturated. If it's not, it can be one, two, or three. It's called partially saturated. So here's what that looks like. So look. Here's external respiration. We just finished talking about it. Remember, external respiration is between air and blood. So here comes the blood. Remember, it's low in oxygen. Partial pressure of oxygen of about 40. Over here, though, the partial pressure of oxygen is about 100. So it's going to happen by diffusion. So oxygen is going to diffuse from the air to the blood. Well, some of it is just going to dissolve in the plasma. It's about 1.5%. Most of it, though, is going to go into the red blood cell, and it's going to bind to hemoglobin so that we get oxyhemoglobin. And that's about 98 and a half percent. So, looks like that. But then this blood is going to move. The blood is going to circulate. And it's going to go to the tissues. And so when we get to the tissues, we're going to have internal respiration. So remember, internal respiration happens between blood and the tissues, between blood and the cells. So if we look at it, remember, it happens completely by diffusion. Over here, there's less oxygen. Remember, the partial pressure of oxygen over here is about 40 Partial pressure of oxygen here is about 100. So we're going to get diffusion from high to low. So that oxygen that was dissolved in the plasma is going to come off. And then the oxygen that was bound to hemoglobin, because it's in this situation where over here there's less oxygen, the oxygen is going to come off. It's going to be loose. And that loose oxygen is going to diffuse into the cells. And then this blood is going to go back to the lungs. And so this is going to happen again. So again, partial pressure of oxygen of about 100. Partial pressure of oxygen over here of about 40. So oxygen is going to diffuse this way. Some's going to dissolve. Some's going to bind the hemoglobin. And then that blood is going to go to the tissues. And so when we get to the tissues, we're again, we're going to get internal respiration. Over here, the partial pressure of oxygen is about 40. Here, it's about 100. And so oxygen is going to diffuse down its gradient. And then it's going to happen again, and again, and again, and again. Any questions about this? Okay. Well, as the oxygen fills up with hemoglobin, we're going to increase the amount that's bound to hemoglobin. So look, right here, there's no oxygen bound to hemoglobin, zero. But up here, 100% of, of the hemoglobin has oxygen on it. And that happens when increasing the level of oxygen. So as the partial pressure of oxygen goes up, more and more and more of it's going to bind to hemoglobin. 
When we look at the graph of that happening, we would expect to see a straight line like this, but we don't. Hemoglobin has a special ability. It can change shape. And what makes it change shape is when oxygen binds. And so it changes the curve. So the curve doesn't look like a straight line. It's S-shaped. S-shaped. And the word for an S-shaped graph is called sigmoid. So it's a sigmoid curve. Now, you don't really have to know those words, but you do need to look and understand this curve. So here's the curve. So what makes it special is this part right here. Look how steep it is. It's not like that, which is at a 45 degree angle. That's like at a, I don't know, 85 degree angle. It's very steep, which means that the oxygen fills up fast on the hemoglobin. Fills up very, very, very fast. Look at this. We can fill our hemoglobin up to 100% with this much oxygen. Well, that's lucky because that's all there is in the lungs. If the graph were this other shape, look, here's how much we would need to fill it up to 100%. We would need this much oxygen. I don't know what that number is. Maybe 120. But we don't have that much. So if hemoglobin didn't have this special ability, we would never be able to fill our all of our hemoglobin up with blood, uh, with oxygen. But we can. So the graph looks like this. Another thing about this graph is the oxygen comes off. So as oxygen decreases in the tissues, oxygen's going to come off. But look, if I'm at rest, as the blood goes through, makes that whole circle, lungs, tissues, not all of the oxygen comes off. Only this much oxygen comes off. In other words, about 25% of the oxygen comes off. But that leaves hemoglobin with oxygen about 75% of it. And that's because the partial pressure of oxygen at rest is about 40. But if you start exercising, these cells out here are going to use more oxygen. And this number is going to go down. So why not be 40? It might be 20. Well, look, at 20, this much of your hemoglobin would drop off oxygen. Look, we didn't have to do anything. We did not have to increase the respiration rate. We did not have to increase cardiac output. We didn't need to do that because we have still 75% of our hemoglobin has oxygen on it. So that can be used when we're exercising or when we need it for some other purpose. So it's sort of a margin for error. So, that's the volume that's unloaded in tissues at rest because that's the partial pressure of oxygen in the tissues at rest. 
But if we drop this number down, we will release more oxygen. That makes sense to everyone? That curve doesn't really change its shape. It stays the same. But that curve can move. We can shift the curve. We can shift it to the right and we can shift it to the left. That's about where we stopped last time. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so tomorrow we're going to pick up right here and we're going to talk about curve shifts, what makes them shift and all that sort of stuff and why it's important. Any questions?